Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the live real broadcast. This is Altera coming to you taped from the New Light 967 studios from our producer, brother Kim Burns. Thank you for joining another edition of the New Jerusalem Live Real Broadcast. The New Jerusalem Live Real Broadcast is sponsored by the New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church. The New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church is located at 160 Sheridan Avenue in Albany, New York, where you can reach someone at 518 463 0260. 518 463 0260. Leave us a voicemail and we'll get in touch with you at some point. You also can check us out on our web, at our website at newjerusalemlive.com. www.newjerusalemlive.com. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, just search New Jerusalem Home of the Save. New Jerusalem Home of the Save. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, that's uh, New Jerusalem Home of the Save in your YouTube search engine. New Jerusalem Home of the Save. Uh, we're an open source church, so that just simply means we put everything out there that we can. Amen. For your disposal, for your listening for your edification amen so again all of those different venues we have available to you but if you just want to call us and say hi we're at 518-463-0260 or you can email us at new jerusalem live at gmail.com but we're most appreciative that you join us those of you who join us every sunday morning every uh, day throughout the week when they air our broadcast throughout the week we want you to know that we appreciate the fact that you listen we're blessed because you listen amen amen it's a blessing to be a blessing i always Pray for my children, Lord, let them be blessed. But even more importantly, let them be a blessing. Amen. I want them to be a blessing. I don't want to just be blessed, but I want to be a blessing. So we pray that as you have blessed us, that we have been able to bless you as well, that we've been able to edify you. We want to give our special love and always our just extend our appreciation to the New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church who sponsors this broadcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is because of your giving that we've been able to be here uh, since 1999. So we want to thank God for New Jerusalem giving faithfully, cheerfully, good spirit, good attitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. Today we want to give honor, amen, to our trustees, unto our evangelists, unto our ministers, our deacons and our deaconesses, our auxiliary, new, auxiliary leaders, the New Jerusalem Church family, to my wife, Dr. Pamela Harper, and to our children, Brianna and Timothy. We want to honor, amen, the new like 96-7 staff, the Crawford family, thank God for you. And to our producer, Brother Kim Burns, we thank God for all of them, amen, who have been so instrumental, not only on our success of our broadcast, but also just with regards to their edification of our body, amen, our, of our part of the vineyard. And we thank God for all the various things that they have done to contribute, amen, where the Lord is doing great things. We want to pray for those who are sick and afflicted, those who are sick and shut in, praying for bereaved families, the mothers of Zion, amen, our mother Walker, our mother Hatchet, our mother Pearl, sister Carol Branch, God bless you. Praying, amen, even uh, for all of the fathers, amen. Last week was Father's Day, so we're continuing to pray for you all, especially those who are sick and set in, those who are uh, growing old, amen, but wise as well. We're praying the Lord will keep you, amen, and hold on to you, and you'll be able to give words of life and words of edification. We're praying for the marriage and the singles, uh, praying for, amen, families, praying for the youth, praying for this summer season, amen, that it will be a safe season, that the Lord will keep us and hold us up. Up, amen. And that we will stay under his covering, praying for tragedies, both human and natural. Praying, amen, for the military troops. Lord, bless our military troops. Bless those who are separated from their families. Bless those children. Bless those who are out there on the front lines, sacrificing their lives on behalf of us. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them. We're praying for the government at all levels, praying for our inmates as well, that while they're there, the Lord will help. Lord, we ask you to bring deliverance and answer these requests. Help us, Lord, because we cry unto you. You told us to ask, to seek, and to knock. And we do all of those, Lord, right now, knowing that you have the answers, oh, God, and you can provide the solution. And so we count, we depend, and we trust in you. Now, Lord, we even thank you for the opportunity to be here to minister to your people. Give us a word to speak, oh, God, and give them an ear to hear. We believe you and we trust you and we thank you right now in jesus name we pray amen again l2 harper coming you taped with my producer brother ken burns uh segment two of two your test is a compliment amen when you get compliment when you get a test amen when you go through a trial when you get through a tribulation it's really a compliment from the lord it's saying that i brought you somewhere now i'm going to show you where i brought you he's trying to show you he's trying to do two things he's trying to affirm sometimes he's trying to affirm and show you what's inside of you because sometimes we don't realize what he's put in us amen through our testing through our spiritual maturing through our growth through our development through all of the various things you've been through god has put some wonderful things in you 
you. And sometimes those things will not come out until you face a challenge or a test. And then he's also trying to confirm that you're still on the path. Amen. When your test comes, sometimes the Lord just wants to confirm for you, you're still on the path. Amen. Because if he, if he stops testing you, that means he's done with you. Amen. And he, I don't want him to be done with me. So Lord, give me another test. Amen. Amen. It's just like school. If you get no more tests, that means some, something happened. You graduated or failed, right? So but with the Lord, he's going to keep testing you because you're on the road. Amen. It's a confirmation that he's still with you. His testing of his children is confirmation that he's still working with you. And most of us, when we pray, we say, Lord, keep working with me. Make me better, Lord. That, that good old classic song they had a long time ago. Make me better. Make me better, Lord. If it takes... Oh, glory. I can't even get all the words. I'll sing that one day. Make me better. That's a, that's a good one, bro. Can't even Google that one day. It's, I can't remember the choir, but it's called Make Me Better. Please make me better. That's a classic old gospel choir song that we used to sing in my, probably in my teens, maybe my late teens. Amen. Probably uh, it, uh, make me better. Matthew 4 today. Amen. Jesus tempted by Satan. The testing, you're testing my brother, you're testing my sister is a compliment. You must read Matthew 4, 1 through 11. I don't have the time, so I'm going to read just some of the scriptures. But if you want to get the whole uh, context of the story, you want to read Matthew 4, 1 through 11. I think I'm just going to begin with the last test. So I'm going to begin in verse eight, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto them, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leave of him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. So the test here was to remind the Lord, your test, my brother, your test is to remind the Lord that God is bigger. stars you're bigger than the things oh that could tear me apart you're bigger than the universe you're bigger than the sun and the stars you're bigger than the things oh my oh my that could tear me apart Bible says that he took him up and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And Jesus had the revelation, God is bigger. Amen. So sometimes the, the enemy will show you something. Amen. They were talking about a, a blowfish. And when the blowfish, I heard a preacher preach one time, and when the blowfish puts air in his mouth and his mouth gets really, really big. Amen. And it magnifies it. The magnitude of it is bigger. Amen. So you got to understand sometimes the magnitude of your test, the size of your test seems like it's bigger. But the Lord sent you the test to show you that I'm still bigger than your test. I'm still bigger than your trial. I'm still bigger than that negative situation. My brother, my sister, God is bigger. He's trying to affirm for you that God is bigger. And because God is inside of you, oh, glory, and you can do all things through Christ with strength enough you, you are bigger. Amen. But God inside of you, you're bigger than your test. You may not feel like it. Amen. You may not be able to see it, but that's why the Bible says you got to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to work by the hearing of the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing 
hearing by what? The word of God. Amen. Your test, my brother, your test, my sister, is simply a compliment. It's a compliment. The Lord is saying, because you have achieved, because you have gotten where you are, I can test you in this way, and I believe you shall come out has pure gold. Amen. Pure gold. John 21. Uh, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my lambs. And he saith unto him the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he saith unto him the third time. So the second and third time, this, that was the test. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he was not able to convince him the first two times. <laughs> Amen. And he asked him the third time. Sometimes when the Lord asks us the question over and over again, it's like when you hear the same sermon over and over again. And you're like, Lord, didn't I get that? And what the Lord is trying to show you, no, you didn't get it. That's why I had to bring it back, right? So evidently he wanted Peter to realize how much he loved him. The Lord already knows how much you love him, but sometimes the Lord wants you to know how much you love him. <laughs> Amen. Glory. So he asked Peter the third time, and Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me and he said to me lord thou knowest all things thou knowest that i love him love thee and jesus said unto him feed my sheep so the lord wanted to establish with peter how much peter loved him because peter didn't even realize how much he loved jesus until the lord finished question sometimes you don't realize how much and how close you've drawn to the lord until you go through your tasks and the Lord is saying to you, here I am. Wait, didn't I answer before? <laughs> Lord said, I got to test you, Peter. I want you to see what's inside of you. So the Lord said, I'm testing you because I want you to see what's inside of you. You don't even realize how much you've grown. You don't realize how much you've matured. You don't realize how far you've come. Amen. Until you get through your test. You're, my brother, my sister, your test is a compliment. This is the Elder T. R. Harper coming. You taped from the New Light 967 Studios. My producer, brother Ken Barnes, the New Jersey Live Radio Broadcast. The New Jerusalem Live Radio Broadcast is sponsored by the New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church. The New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church is located at 160 Sheridan Avenue. You can reach someone via voicemail at 518-463-0260, 518-463-0260, or email us at newjerusalemlive at gmail.com, newjerusalemlive at gmail.com, or type in New Jerusalem Homeless Safe Church in any search engine, and something should pop up, hopefully the right thing. <laughs> so pop up, say amen, so uh, do that when you can. Amen. Our topic today is your test is a compliment segment two of two your test is a compliment our subtopic god's testing focuses on both affirmation and confirmation affirming and confirming so whenever you're going through a test know that god is either affirming or he's confirming amen he's affirming or confirming every test involves affirmation and confirmation acts nine again read this to on your own at your own leisure nine one through 16 i only have time to read verse 13 amen uh, 13 through 16 then ananias answered lord i have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at jerusalem amen so here's the test for ananias 
uh, there's somebody who somebody has told him that person is really, really bad. <laughs> and if you go see him, he's going to get you. Amen. So it'd be like the Lord telling you that somebody's after you. <laughs> and if they ever catch you, they're going to get you really, really bad. And the Lord said, OK, well, I want you to go preach. to him, <laughs> Right. So he basically tells Ananias, there's somebody who's after you, but I need you to go preach to him. <laughs> glory, glory. God is good, isn't he? he? God does have a sense of humor. <laughs> and, and and here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. So and I said, now you want me to go talk to someone who has authority to bind me when he sees me? <laughs> Glory. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So just imagine again, uh, wait a minute, I have to put myself in the own story, right? Someone has just told me somebody's out to get you. <laughs> and when they, when, you, when they catch up with you, they're going to get you really bad. And then the Lord shows me in a dream, I want you to go preach to that person who's out to get you. Amen. Now, <laughs> uh, your test is a compliment. This was a compliment to Ananias that God chose him to go talk to Saul, who we all know will become one of the greatest apostles ever, right? What an honor, what a privilege to be the person who God sends to talk to Saul. But at that moment, amen, Ananias had no idea. But my brother, my sister, didn't you know? Powerful anointed songs there is. Now here, here I'm gonna just give you a couple of lines out of that store. Story. This is what the Lord had to tell Ananias. Didn't I know your fears before I gave you this test? Didn't I share your pain before I brought you this test? Haven't I wiped your away your tears before I brought this test? And haven't I sheltered you from the rain before this test? Right. So sometimes the Lord brings us a test. To remind us what he's already done so we will believe that he's going to do it again. Amen. Sometimes the Lord has to remind us what he's already done so he can do it again. Amen. What he's already done so we can believe that he'll do it again. Amen. What he's already done so he can do it again. He said, Ananias, don't worry. I've sheltered you from your fears. I've covered your tears. I've shared your pain. But I believe you can do it. So I'm going to send you to Paul. Amen. 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 Glory. Uh, Acts 10 and 17, the story of Peter and Cornelius. Again, I don't have time, saints, to read this. You got to read all of Acts 10 and all of Acts 11. If you really want to understand the story of Peter and Cornelius, you've got to read all of Acts 11 
in all of Acts 10. Now, actually, this is the test for both Peter and Cornelius. But I want to just really deal with the aspect of Peter, who basically was put in a situation where he knew that if he answered the call of God to speak to Cornelius, now God had to show Peter a vision, right? And I don't have time to get into that. God had to show Peter a vision, a vision regarding food in order to prepare him for Cornelius. Amen. But even after that, Peter still had to deal with the fact that if I go and deal with these Gentiles, I'm going to receive backlash. Amen. That's a test. Backlash is a test. If you're going to be a minister from the Lord, there's some things God are going to tell you to do and nobody around you is going to agree with it. <laughs> Amen. That's your test. The test is, can you do something when nobody around you is going to agree with it? That's a test, my brother. That's a test, my sister. Uh, 23, then he called them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brother from Joppa, or Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he had called together his kinsmen and near friends. We have to understand the deep challenge Peter faced by going to see these people. My brother, my sister, even when you know you're going to get backlash, yes, you can. I found something for you and you. Mm -hmm. If you listen well, I'm here to tell you you can not lose. Oh, a simple song, simple melody, right? to remind you that you can be the great. Ever defeated, never. Oh, even though sometimes you may lose your oh mind. Yes, you can, my brother. Yes, you can, my sister. You're going to have a test where you're going to be all by yourself. <laughs> right? Peter here. Now, somebody said the, 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 the people who followed him, certain brother, they went with him. But basically, Peter was all by himself. <laughs> and he knew that when this got out, there were going to be a lot of folks who were going to be mad at him. Amen. Can you minister when folks are going to be mad at you? Can you do the work of the Lord when folks are going to be mad at you? Can you minister when folks, there's going to be backlash, right? Amen. Your test is a compliment. When the Lord puts you in that situation where he says, I believe that you can do this, even though you know there's going to be backlash, that's a compliment, my brother. That's a compliment, my sister. When the Lord says, I believe I can give you this test and you're not going to receive public support, but I believe you still can do it. So I'm going to give you this test. It's a compliment, my brother. It's a compliment, my sister. Acts 19. And again, I wish I don't have more time. You got to read 24 through 37 to get the story here of Paul being tested by the idol worshipers. But I want to focus on the town clerk who becomes an angel unaware. The Bible says, be careful not to entertain strangers for some have entertained angels unaware. So if we go down to verse 35 and the Bible says, now Paul is under pressure, his companions are under pressure and the people really, really want to get them. But here's what happens. The Lord says, and when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, you ought to be quiet and to do nothing rash. In other words, the Lord had an angel in the middle of Paul's test. What are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, preacher? I'm trying to say God has angels watching over you.
Amen. You've got angels in the middle of your test, my brother. Sometimes the Lord gives you a test to show you I, I got angels over you. <laughs> You're covered. You're covered by my angels. So he wanted Paul and his companions to know I've got an angel. And the town clerk was the angel. Amen. The Lord's got angels in your workplace. He's got angels in your church. He's got angels in your neighborhood. He's got angels everywhere you go. <laughs> and their angels are watching over you. Glory, glory, glory. You've got angels watching over. Let me quickly go through these uh, messages. Uh, segments two of two. Your test is a compliment. God's testing always focuses on affirmation and confirmation. Now, I'm going to have to talk really fast, and I have a southern accent. So that's not a good combination, talking fast <laughs> and a southern accent. But here we go. Number one, your test is designed to put you on a different trajectory. Number two, God's test designed to show you that you can do the same thing your forefathers did, your spiritual fathers did, your spiritual mothers did. You can accomplish the same works. Three, God wants you to know that even during your test, you're in a place of victory. Even during your test, you're in a place of victory. Four or five, whatever, your test is designed to show you can move God. Six, your test is designed to show you you already have it in you. Prophesy, speak it, you already have it in you. Next, God is bigger than your tests. God is bigger than your trial. Next, God wants you to sometimes realize how much you've grown and matured, and he shows you through your test. Your test is a compliment. Sometimes God gives you a test to remind you what he's already done so you can believe he's going to do it again. Sometimes God gives you a test to remind you what he's already done so you believe he can do it again. Sometimes tests are designed when you have to be alone and you know backlash is coming. Sometimes the Lord gives you a test where you're all alone and backlash is coming. Just ask Peter with Cornelius. And finally, sometimes the Lord gives you a test just to reveal to you, you've got angels watching over you, my brother. You've got angels watching over you, my sister. We pray you've been blessed by the broadcast today at 10 o'clock a.m. at Sunday school. 11.30 a.m. is our worship experience. God bless you. God keep you to next Sunday morning.